Welcome to Wood Green's Physics Made Easy series. This week we're going to look at uh, motion graphs, how to interpret them. You will notice I have done four graphs, two distance time graphs and two velocity time graphs. Now, this is all about, in the first instance, this is all about interpreting the motion of the object described by that graph. In the first one, this distance time graph, you will notice that the distance does not change with time. The object is stationary. Stationary, of course, with an A. We're not talking about envelopes. You notice that this graph is exactly the same as the one above, but the label on the vertical axis has changed to velocity. Here is an exam tip. Always look at the labels on the axes in a GCSE exam so that you give the correct interpretation. Here the velocity is not changing with time, therefore this one is travelling at a constant velocity. If the velocity is constant, i.e. not changing, it cannot be accelerating. So the acceleration in this context is zero. Moving on to the next pair, notice that for this distance time graph, the slope of the graph, or the gradient of the graph, is constant. And what this is actually showing you as the distance, in the increase in the distance is exactly the same in equal intervals of time. So in maths, for example, you would work out the gradient using the vertical difference over the horizontal. And that is constant all the way through. The slope is the same. The gradient is the same. Now, if that's the case, in this context, the gradient represents a velocity. And in, we, we can describe this one as an object travelling at a constant velocity. In the one below, a velocity time graph, again, looks the same as the one above, but the information that it provides is completely different. The gradient, too, is constant. You've got equal, uh, in equal intervals of increase in velocity in equal intervals of time. So... That's the rate of change of a velocity is constant. So in this particular case, it's accelerating, and the gradient, or the slope of the graph, represents the acceleration. I'll just use acceleration with a little triangle to shorten it. Now, one other extra piece of information provided by velocity time graphs, both of these, for a velocity time graph, is that if I take a, a square here, a, a square, that that, and I worked out the area of the square, this would be the velocity or the distance, this would be the time. So, a velocity or the speed, and this would be the time. Now, a distance is speed times time. So, the area represents the distance travelled. As in all the previous uh, Physics Made Ease series, we'll leave you with a challenging question. I've given you a graph, a velocity time graph. You may ask yourself what's happening to the motion of the object in this case, and you may want to even think about the context in which you may find uh, this particular graph. Thank you for watching.